never dared to break the seal on this scroll, though I often wanted to. I found it in a dust-covered box with a label marked Maps of Southron Trade Routes. Baranor is a Haradrim, so perhaps this scroll has a map of his homeland. Breaking the seal is strictly forbidden for those who aren't Lords of Gondor, and as much as I'm curious, I know my father would not approve. Did you ever travel to the Southern Lands? There is little there that interests me, and few who go there return. are neither the only denizens of Mordor, nor the first. Easterlings and Haradrim have settled here from time to time, often at the Dark Lord's invitation. They are scarce today, but one can still find their strange artistic carvings scattered in places from Nern to the city of the Corsairs. Artifact of the Herodry. Interesting. Few find their way this far north. And for that, your nation should be grateful. Minas Ethel is on Gondor's frontier, so we have few occasions for the grand balls and masquerades that are surely common events in the capital city. Fine dresses like this one are worn for ceremony. Funerals and weddings, mostly. Not for lordly entertainment. I wonder if the noble families of Minas Tirith spared a thought for us, holding all of Mordor at bay while they danced. Another fine garment thoughtlessly cast away. Who in Mordor would wear such a thing in days like these? Gondorians, this midnight urn is a simple pot of clay, but to the denizens of Minas Ethel, it represented shared sacrifice that only those who live on the frontier understand. For centuries, the name of every able-bodied resident of Minas Ethel was placed in the midnight urn, and at sunset a name was drawn. That person would have to patrol the city's walls until sunrise. The task was ceremonial once we had a professional army. But that made it no less important. From our earliest days, it was always a neighbor watching from the walls. I was ten the first time they drew my name, and I've never been prouder, though I could barely see over the parapet. Why leave the defense of your walls to chance? It isn't about chance. It's about unity. Everyone's names are mixed together, and everyone takes a turn on the wall. Gondor's artisans rival the elves in their dedication, if not their skill. None more so than our weavers. Paint on a wall or canvas will fade in time, but thread retains its vibrant color for centuries. The Numenorians taught our people the art of the loom generations ago, and it is a talent we've nurtured ever since. Our tapestries immortalize our greatest triumphs, but it seems there's always another enemy to darken the horizon.
Looks like he just oh, keeps going here! <laughs> The lamps of Eregion illuminate a room with a soft glow, one that leaves only the most tenuous of shadows, a light that seems willing to turn corners and reach further than it ought. When we stored these lamps in the Great Hall, I would light them for an evening every midwinter just to ensure they still functioned. They cheered me so much that I always resolved to do so more often, but then I'd forget or put it off. How I miss their light now. I fashioned these lamps and gave them to the dwarves of Moria. Then they've traveled very far indeed. But in whose hands? I don't like the sound of that! Men and orcs have clashed for centuries. In living memory, the greatest battle between them took place near Long Lake, where men, aided by elves and dwarves, battled the orcs and goblins of Moria. The free folk won the day, and some accounts claim that eagles of the Misty Mountains swooped down onto the battlefield, casting the orcs down from the cliffs and mountains where they stood. Seems a fanciful tale. I saw no eagles overhead when Minas Ethel fell, though we did have Talion and his strange powers. We would have welcomed aid from anywhere, even the skies. The eagles of the Misty Mountains are more than a myth. Perhaps, but I doubt they'd fare well against the drakes I've seen. I've never seen a warg, but books and traveling hunters have told me plenty. The goblins of the north can ride wargs as the men of Rohan ride horses. Their howls can be heard leagues away, and their senses are keen enough to track even a ranger. What makes a warg truly fearsome is that they hunt in packs of a dozen or more. Categors are more dangerous, but they travel in smaller numbers. A feeble blessing, that. I'm glad they don't range in the Mordor. Even a pack of wargs would find survival here difficult. This artifact was a gift from Gondor's other frontier, the long beaches of Unthalus along Gondor's distant shores. Their lord, Galasgil, sent us this ceremonial bowl with water from the river Morthond, and we kept the bowl long after the water had evaporated. 
I've often daydreamed of visiting Unpalas. I think I'd like it better than the capital city of Minas Tirith. There is too much of the frontier within me to be happy living in settled lands. This bowl is far from home. As are we all, Calabrimbo. My earliest memories are of being nestled under blankets as my mother showed me the illustrations in a storybook about Loki the Larrikin, whose mischief always ended in disaster, though she was always one step ahead of her stern governess. I found the book tucked away years later after I learned to read. And I was surprised to learn that the storybook was full of little morality plays, not the comic tales my mother told. I wonder why she did that. Doggerel to amuse children, I see. No. Something more. I read this storybook to my son, long ago. The elves of the distant north have long been named among Gondor's allies, though I've never seen one in person. This cloak is as light as the morning fog on the shoulders. I tried it on once and its colors seem to shift and blend as the light changes. How meager the product of our looms is when compared to elven handiwork. I recognize this cloak. It is of my people. A people we see precious few signs of in this land. <laughs> 